Hi friends, in this video, I would like to continue the shoulder part 2. In this video, first I would like to discuss about the shoulder joint injuries, slab tear, clavicle fracture and then shoulder joint pathologies, then end with the rehabilitation and management principle of acute injuries and chronic pathologies. Here we can see slab tear, supralabral tear from anterior to posterior to diagnose. The arm should be kept in 120 degree and ask the patient to flex the elbow against our resistance. This flexion of elbow against our resistance causes pain in shoulder joint, which is suggestive of slab tear. This is a very good clinical examination test and it, its name is called as biceps load 2 test. Biceps load 2 test in this test. Patient's arm is kept in 120 degree abduction, elbow in supination, and ask the patient to flex his elbow against our resistance. This is the clinical examination test. The next clinical examination test is palpation. Here in this video, we can see a triangle. Here, supraspinatus tendon is attached on the anterolateral aspect, and then just below that, anteriorly, Subscapularis is attached and anteriorly in this place we can feel coracoid process. This is a triangle and in the middle of the triangle we can feel the anterior capsule. This is a coracoid process. We can feel the coracoid process and then here we can feel supraspinatus and just below that we can feel subscapularis muscle and in the middle of that we can feel anterior capsule. This is a triangle. Again I repeat this is a triangle. Supraspinatus, coracoid process, and subscapularis forms a triangle. And in the center of triangle, we can feel anterior capsule. And on palpation of anterior capsule, we can diagnose labral tear. Two other clinical examination include speed test. Ask the patient to elevate his arm against our resistance. It's also a test for biceps tendinitis. Then includes the apprehension test. Apprehension means abduction and external rotation. In this particular position, patient apprehends, which is suggestive of recurrent shoulder dislocation. And also, we can do anterior drawer test. The similar test in knee joint, we can do anterior drawer test, which is also positive. Please note that only one clinical examination should be done. All the clinical examination should not be done in a single patient. You can use any one, one only. Only one test is needed as part of clinical examination. Otherwise, all these clinical examination tests are provocative tests. So, you should not do all the clinical examination in one patient. Why? Because the patient felt severe pain while doing this maneuver. So with simple and effective clinical examination methods, you should diagnose precisely within very short time. You should develop that skill. For that, you should learn clinical examination. From beginning, you should start with clinical DAS. Then you can use MACRE. As after learning clinical examination DAS, you can learn MACRE. Another clinical examination test is readers, R-E-I-D-E-R, very good clinical examination test. Not a need to study all at once. You should start with clinical dust and then upgrade to MACRE and then to readers. And also you can use the site Physiopedia or A-A-O-S. This particular site also is uh, helping very much in learning the clinical examination test. This particular fracture is fracture at the junction of medial two-third and lateral one-third. This fracture is common fracture of clavicle. And in this particular fracture, you can see the medial fragment goes upwards due to the pull of sternocleidomastoid, mastoid and lateral fragment goes downwards due to the pull of pectoralis major. And this in this particular fracture, this is explained by Ajari Susrada in Susrada Chigilsa, third Bhakna Chigilsa. The fragment which goes downwards should be kept upward. Which is gone upward, it should be placed to downward position, normal position, stable position. And the most important thing is that in all fracture, Ajari Susrada explains Sambabanda or Sadharana Banda, and here. Ajari Susurudha explained Gada Bandha. Why Gada Bandha? To avoid redislocation. To avoid redislocation. This is regarding the management of Ashragasti Bhakna. Clavicle fracture at the junction of medial two-third and lateral one-third. You can use clavicle brace or figure of eight bandage. The most important thing in this particular management is do not tight 
it more the clavicle brace should be loose your only aim is to keep the chest in expanded position which helps to reduce the both the fragments without displacement please keep the chest in expanded position only don't give much pressure why because it causes axillary artery nerve and vein injury if it's too much tight so you should apply it very softly and lightly this is biceps rupture biceps rupture seen in above 50 age group whenever there is sudden movement of biceps no need of surgical management conservative management itself gives good results the, if the patient comes to you acute at the acute phase you can do a bandage if the patient comes after a period of injury then you should definitely give rehabilitation this is biceps muscle injury the flexion of elbow itself gives the diagnosis the proximal part is like this it shows much swelling if there is bicep tear this is acromioclavicular joint dislocation or subluxation acromioclavicular joint subluxation you should compare both the sides then you can diagnose acromioclavicular joint subluxation this particular injury happened to one of my friend who did ice skating in lulu mall you know ice skating in lulu mall in the upper floor from the he met with this particular injury acromioclavicular joint dislocation in this last eight years i met with most commonly about 10 cases of acromioclavicular uh, dislocation or subluxation which uh, is most commonly overlooked by orthopedicians itself this particular injury is very easy to find out just the inspection itself gives acromioclavicular joint subluxation there will be swelling over that particular part there will be tenderness and the final 30 degree abduction is affected due to this particular injury by checking both the comparing both the x-ray itself you can give the diagnosis if it, the patient come to you on the very next day or on the first time acute phase of injury you should give downward pressure as part of reduction and then strapping and then shoulder spike a bandage should be applied after two to three weeks of immobilization ask the patient to do the rehabilitation rehabilitation is very important if the patient come to you after three weeks or four weeks of injury then if you press downward it won't come to normal position then you give rehabilitation if there is dislocation if there is dislocation the one two ligaments are there conoid ligament and trapezoid ligament that is coracoclavicular ligaments from the clavicle to coracoid process there are two ligaments coracoclavicular ligaments conoid ligament and trapezoid ligament if the conoid ligament and trapezoid ligament is completely tear during this injury then the clavicle goes upwards with more displacement in that particular condition surgical reconstruction is needed if it is subluxation then there is no need of surgical reconstruction this is regarding ac joint dislocation this up please scratch test is the most common clinical examination to rule out whether the shoulder pain is due to cervical or due to shoulder the most common cause of shoulder pain is c5 c6 lesion the most common cause of shoulder pain is c5 c6 lesion so whenever a patient come to you with complaint of shoulder pain radiating down up to elbow your first clinical examination should to diagnose whether it's cervical or shoulder for that you can do this up please scratch test one is external rotation and abduction simultaneously another is internal rotation by this two clinical examination itself if the patient is not having pain in this up please scratch test then the condition is due to cervical this you can do within 10 seconds within 10 seconds you can differentiate whether the condition is either due to shoulder or due to cervical hope you understand the clinical examination test one is external rotation and abduction like this another is internal rotation itself by doing this through two clinical examination itself you can diagnose whether it's due to shoulder joint pathology or due to cervical in up please scratch test this internal rotation is first affected in periarthritis periarthritis or frozen shoulder or adasi capsulitis first the internal rotation is affected then abduction is affected in periarthritis which is more common in diabetes patient but it may occur to other patients also this periarthritis may occur to post traumatic condition if the rehabilitation is not done today i see such a case the patient come to me after 6 weeks of injury after 6 weeks of injury he came to me without doing any bandage or rehabilitation that patient has diabetes mellitus and today his internal rotation is affected this is due to post-traumatic condition 
due to absence of rehabilitation. A please scratch test give the diagnosis. This particular condition is a periarthritis condition. You can do rectum oxa from medial cubital vein for the better relief in the initial phase to man in the management of pain. Periarthritis means initial condition is pain. Second condition is reduction of pain with increasing stiffness. Third condition is subsides. Here you can do the rectum osha procedure as part of pain management, only as part of pain management. And then advise the patient to do rehab rehabilitation without pain. This is speed test to diagnose biceps tendinitis. Speed test for biceps tendinitis. In speed test, ask the patient to elevate his arm in this particular position against our resistance. Patient felt pain over the anterior part, mainly over the coracoid process from which one head of the biceps starts. This is particularly speed test to diagnose biceps tendinitis. This is empty can test. Empty can test, the difference is empty can. Empty can means whenever I am doing emptying of can like this. In this particular position, in the internal rotation, ask the patient to do further abduction against our resistance, which is diagnostic of supraspinatus tendinitis. I already explained supraspinatus is attached on the suprolateral aspect of shoulder. Here I think all of you know this particular method of decimola cultivation. You can get one and a half meter length root by cultivating in this particular method. We can discuss this later if time allows. Coming to the rehabilitation. The rehabilitation of shoulder includes first the rehabilitation is pendulum exercise. You should start shoulder rehab with pendulum exercise, which is very effective and easy. The patient should stand like this. The upper trunk should be parallel to the ground and then anterior and posterior movements, lateral movements, and then rotation, clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation is done. This is pendulum exercise. In the second phase of pendulum exercise, ask the patient to do this pendulum exercise with weight bearing. And this is assisted, assisted against a, the support of a wall, assisted abduction. This is assisted abduction with the help of other hand abduction is done abduction with support of a pulley it can be done either in sitting or standing position this is shoulder mobilization simply shrugging elevation of shoulder this is shoulder mobilization rotation it can be done in the initial phase itself this is internal rotation with support this is very effective in the periarthritis periarthritis in the initial phase itself the patient should start as i already explained internal rotation is most commonly affected in the initial phase of periarthritis, then abduction and external rotation is affected. In the initial phase of periarthritis itself, ask the patient to do internal rotation with assistance. This particular exercise is called as towel stretch and this should be applied in the second phase. External rotation against resistance, internal rotation against resistance, isometric internal and external rotation against resistance. The patient is not moving the hand against resistance. All movements can be done. Abduction, flexion, extension, all movements can be done against resistance and here it is done at the last. After this internal and external rotation, all movements can be advised with 1 kg weight and then it should be increased to 2 kg. And also biceps exercise like this. Biceps and triceps is very important in maintaining the stability of the shoulder and at the last phase, you can start abduction. In 90 degree abduction, internal rotation and external rotation. In 90 degree abduction, external rotation and then internal rotation, this movement can be advised with weight bearing. This is advised at the last phase of the rehabilitation. Coming to the primary management of injury, in the initial phase, you, your management should be price, protection, rest, ice, compression and elevation. And you should definitely do the bandage. If it's an injury case, you should definitely do the bandage with Motivana. Coming to the primary management of chronic conditions, pathological conditions, periarthritis, biceps tendinitis, supraspinatus tendinitis, acromioclavicular arthritis. In acromioclavicular arthritis, which is very common, glenohumeral arthritis is very rare. I already explained in abduction of shoulder, the initial abduction is facilitated by supraspinatus muscle. If the patient is not able to do the initial abduction, it means his supraspinatus is completely cleared. Painful R syndrome in the 70 degree to 120 degree and last 20 degree is by acromioclavicular joint. When the entire, entire abduction is affected, it is called as glenohumeral arthritis, which is very rare, but acromioclavicular joint, is, joint arthritis is very common. In that particular conditions, shoulder joint pathologies, Amash of Ahara medicines should be advised in the initial phase. You can use any Anushastra. In tendinitis, you can go with Agni Karma. 
in periarthritis rectum mosha is very effective if there is no pain then no need of rectum mosha rectum mosha is to relieve the pain and facilitate the rehabilitation with the immediate relief after the rectum mosha the patient felt immediate relief and the patient abduction and internal rotation is improved also which gives more confidence to the patient to do the rehabilitation internal sneha prayoga is very much important in all all pathological condition of shoulder in all pathological condition of shoulder joint rasayana yoga rehabilitation i already explained and nutritional support should be addressed coming to just ababa huga possibilities it includes there are lot of conditions simply we can tell lot of condition but the most common condition includes cervical radiculopathy c5 c6 and i already explained that the most common cause of shoulder joint pain is C, uh, cervical radiculopathy and the most common place where in cervical most common area where disc lesions occur is c5 c6 which causes radicular pain over shoulder cervical radiculopathy clavicle fracture shoulder dislocation fracture neck of humerus supraspinal dystia brachial plexus injury f paralysis acromioclavicular joint subluxation all these conditions can be cause ababa huga the diagnosis through clinical examination is very important in giving better result to the patient so this clinical examination is very important you should learn all the clinical examination of shoulder joint as shoulder joint is consist the shoulder joint consists of rotator cuff muscles and also there are suprahumeral middle humeral and infraglenohumeral ligaments and there are coracoclavicular ligaments coracoacromial ligaments and all these ligaments muscles sub deltoid bursa is there deltoid muscle is there all these conditions should be differentiated by clinical examination clinical examination gives correct picture of the diagnosis the history either its injury or pathology the history is important the painful r syndrome is due to abduction and internal rotation this particular moment abduction and internal rotation typically causes impingement of supraspinatus in between acromion process and head of the humerus and this particular moment by asking the patient what the patient's job this is very important in the provisional diagnosis specific diagnosis through clinical examination and relevant investigations and kerala tradition kerala tradition medicines means you can give pajana amrutha or amrutha if it's a more pitta adike condition or likewise you can change the medicines and the most important thing is that reduce the number of medicines also reduce you use yoga with drugs below number of 10 this is a very good practice like if you adopt kerala tradition this is very effective and usage of anushastra anushastra is not needed in all conditions you should use it judiciously as per condition you use anushastra rehabilitation and true mental assurance is very important in the management of shoulder joint injury and shoulder joint pathology the most common condition of shoulder joint is shoulder joint dislocation hope you understood the reduction method which is very effective you should learn it earlier in calicut i took a class uh, it was uh, regarding another topic but i mentioned shoulder joint dislocation and a student from kannur was attending that particular session on the very next week itself while he traveling in bus he reduced the case and made a call that he reduced the case and uh, it was a very proud moment for me that patient, that uh, particular doctor did the reduction method in bus itself and made a call to me to share the happy news okay let's conclude here thank you